Moses, he take a bath usually. So normally, you know, people, what they do, you want to take a bath and the floor is muddy, wet. You put your clothes in the rock. I do that all the time. All the time, brother. So I put my, Moses, he put his clothes there. He put his credit card, his phone, I mean, everything. And now he is naked because there's nobody. He don't take a ticket if there's anyone around him. He's very shy. He jump in the water. The second he jump in the water, brother, the stone start running. Brother, those things happen all the time. At that time, stone they used to steal a cloth. How we can understand this conclusion? As you notice, Moses, when the stone she took his clothing, he did not get surprised. He did not even say like, wow, stone is running? It was like, oh, okay, stone is running. Now, this is normal, you know, it's happening every day. He did not feel for a second there is a mystery behind this. It was a very normal behavior. In the time of Moshe, stones used always to steal clothing. Very well known stories. The stone took the clothes. And she ran. Moses, he was putting shampoo. But still he was able to see the stone taking the clothes and moving slowly, sneaking out, opening the door slowly. When he saw the stone, he did not move automatically. He said, let me sneak on her. But the stone starts running. And the stone is so fast. Extremely fast. I mean, how in the world you can even chase a stone is running? They are round, which means they will run like a ball. I don't know if they have legs. The stone who took the clothing of Moses, she ran and Moses started chasing the stone. If you read with me here, it says, Moses ran after it, saying, Oh, stone! Oh, my clothes, oh, stone, my clothes, is stone. Benu Israel, which means children of Israel. Then they had a chance to see the private parts of Moses. In Muslims, what do you mean private parts? What you are implying here, he had many private parts. Private parts? What? You know what? I don't, do you think Moses, he have two penises, maybe? And four balls? Huh? Private port? Or parts? So Moses now is running after the stone and he is wet, remember that. And his penis is a dripping water. He stood in the front of the stone, and his penis is dripping water. Because remember, he did not use any towel or anything. So he was screaming, "Stone! Stop the stone! Stone!" And the stone stopped, and his penis is dripping water. Subhanallah.
And then Musa's, when the stone stopped, some coins fell down from the pocket of the stone. Because Moses now he need to prove that the stone is the one who stole his clothing. He said, see? He see? She took my clothing. And Moses, he did not notice that all the Jews now looking at his penis. I mean, come on, put yourself in his I cannot say shoes because now he's naked. I mean, come on, you don't have shoes. But you know what I'm saying, like, you know? So people, they were looking like, what the heck? Like, this guy is naked walking in the street. You know, why his penis is moving left or right? You know, I, I wish there's a camera at that time. I mean, Moses will be so, so, so famous. Hmm? Uh, Look what uh, Potanki says. Christian Prince, this is like talk about the balls and the penis so much. <whistles> My friend, this is a question you should say to your prophet because I'm reading your prophet words. It's not me. If your prophet did not keep talking about penises and balls, I will not be talking about it. I'm just reading what your prophet said. You forgot? You are insulting your prophet, my friend. Because I'm reading what your prophet says, and you say to me, he sees the private parts in everything he reads. Well, this is your prophet. Your prophet is the one he is telling us a story, and I'm reading your prophet's story. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. You see, you are reading Muslim translation, right? What the Muslim translation, they say, they try to be polite, they say, they see private parts. I want you in the chat to translate the word private parts for me. I will give you an example, and you give me, like one, it means yes, two, it means no. Private parts in Islam mean his ears. What do you think? Because look like Christian Prince, he liked to talk about those things. It's not Muhammad, by the way. This is a Christian Prince. Can you tell us what the private parts of Moses is? Are you there? Anyway, you notice here in the story how truthful it is that Moses did not even ask how in the world, and even the Jews. Look, look, the Jews, they saw the stone running. But nobody cared really if the stone is running or not. Everybody is looking at the penis of Moses. And must be something. Did you notice? Not, not a single Jew is themselves like, what the heck? A stone is running? Nobody noticed. Nobody even questioned how in the world such a thing happened. But what they were focusing on is the penis of a prophet Moses. It was, I don't know what the word in English, tremendous, tremendous. I don't know, my English is funny, as you know. Tangerine, no, not tangerine. Tremendous, I mean, some song, us, you know, like whatever, us. Okay, so it was tremendous, the penis. I mean, his penis was so amazing to the point nobody of the Jews even questioned how in the world a rock is running. My friend, call me, we can read for you Ezekiel 16 if you want, and people will laugh at you. Hmm? Actually, I can read for you on the screen right away, and people will laugh at you. There's nothing wrong there. You are filthy, dirty like your prophet. So you think, you say things in a dirty way. Can you call me and tell me what is the problem? In Ezekiel 16? You don't dare, because you're a potato, tomato, sheshato. Mm, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. All the chapter of Ezekiel is about 
God is against fornication. God is against adultery. And you will see even, speaking about the daughters of Palestine, If you remember, there's a story in the Bible about Judah. Judah, he was not, uh, in Arabic we call him Yahuwaza. Uh, he was not a good person. So he went and he slept with the Palestinian women. Do you know what the Palestinian they used to do? Anyone knows? Anyone knows what Palestinian used to do? Palestinian women. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about according to the Bible. They have a temple, sexual temple, the same as the Kaaba. A woman, when she want to repent, she go to the temple, and she offer herself to whoever come as a prostitute. The honorable Palestinian religion. This is Islam the same. And in order to take the form of a whore or prostitute, she dress with burqa. And by the way, there's a video of uh, Dida. He speaks what those verses have to do with God in the Bible. Why they are there? Read them. You will see that God there is condemning their sin. Your God, he appreciates their sin. So the Muslim, when they say to you, go and read the Old Testament, we laugh at you. Because the Old Testament is against their sin, their faith. Your God, he praised their sin. As an example, David, he commits sin in the Old Testament. The Quran praised David for his sin. The God in the Old Testament, he even took the son of David. He took him away from him. He caused him to die. He rejected him even to build the temple. The God of Islam, he praised David for his sin. This is the difference, my friend, between the Bible and Islam. Islam is a religion who prays and appraise the sin. Actually, your prophet, he said, that if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. The Bible, God said, if you commit sin, God will destroy you. Do you see the difference? Let us see the verses. Let me show you. Islam is totally the opposite of Christianity. It is satanic. While the God of the Christians, he destroy cities and even the whole world in the time of Noah, the God of Islam says the opposite. Read it. Do you see it? If you don't commit sin, Allah will replace you with people who commit sin. And this is Sahih. You know, the Muslim, they will try to say to you, Oh, this is not Sahih. Uh, this is Daif Hadith. You know, it's Sahih. Sahih Muslim. And even here it says Sahih. I challenge any Muslim to tell me why the God of Islam will destroy us if we don't commit sin. Anyone? Any Muslim? Do you see the total opposite of Christianity? So this God is a very silly God. The stories are very stupid. I mean, somebody accused Moses that he have a problem with his penis. 
Allah wanted to prove that he have nice penis by doing what? By making Moses get humiliated and run in the street showing his penis? Do that, he would say to you. In the Bible it says that Isaiah, he went in the desert, was naked. Naked, 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 wearing nothing, liar. The nakedness of a priest or a prophet is not to wear the uniform of a priest or a, uniform or, or a prophet. They have a clothes they wear in the top of it. That is their nakedness. And he was in the desert anyway. Here we see Allah making a prophet of God run in the street just to show his penis and his testicles to women, children, everybody in the road. And to do what? To prove that his penis is fine? Is it worth it? Have you ever tried to debate Hamza? My friend, is that the one who sell hijab? I mean, this guy is obviously a potato. He's a womanizer. He's not a man enough to do. Let me call him. Give me his Skype. I will call him right now. I could not believe it that there's a guy. He's a man. He's a Muslim. He opened a store to sell clothes to women. This is a business for women. Women, they sell to women. Especially you claim to be a Muslim conservative. Huh. You remind me. Do you know the story of the Bahanut Tamar? The Bahanut Tamar. A woman, she came to his store. He have a, he sell a fruit, a palm fruit. He come to the prophet and he told the prophet, I did with this woman who is she, she is married. Everything the man he do with the women, except sexual intercourse. Everything. The prophet, he said to him, well, it's okay. Allah, he forgive all sin, especially a lemon. What is a lemon? Any Muslim want to call us and tell us what a lemon is? Any Abdul? Huh? Having, kissing, touching, playing with the vagina of a woman, and she is playing with your penis. This is in Islam, lemon, and it's okay? It's not even a adultery? Who want to prove me wrong? Who want to prove me wrong? Ah, what a religion. Lemon, huh? So you take the women inside your store, you touch her private part, you touch her nipples, you play with her, she play with you. It's okay. It's okay, brother. This is lemon. Look what your prophet, even he made a hadith about, he made a verse in the Quran. But look what the hadith says. I have not seen a thing resembling lemon between two bracket minor sin. What? Minor sin. I must think will say to you, come on, this is minor sin. Hello. It's a minor sin in Islam touching married women, playing with her vagina, and she play with your penis, and you kiss and you touch all over. It is lemon. Who wanna challenge me that this is what happened? Hmm? Even the guy in the Bahan, he said to Muhammad, properly her husband doing jihad.
the husband doing jihad, the wife she is offering her vagina to the guy who works in the store to play with it, and this is okay in Islam? Who is a Muslim wanna challenge me and get me busted? And then you will take it, put it in your YouTube channel. Show them that Christian Prince is lying. It doesn't say that, CP. Anyone? I don't see any Muhammad in text to me in Skype. Do you see how amazing this religion, brother? I mean, come on, think about it. Is that the same teaching of Jesus? You take a married woman inside your store and you touch and you play with her private part. And the prophet, he said to you, it's okay. This is lemon. And Abdul? Who wanna get me busted? Because you know, Christian Prince, he always lied to you, don't he? Come on. Don't he? Any Abdul? What kind of religion this religion is? You can touch a woman everywhere. You can kiss her. You can play with her private part. She can play with your private part. Even if you, if, excuse my language, if you put your private part in the wrong location, you know what I'm talking about. This is not for location yet in Islam. Is that true? The prophet, he said to him, maybe you did kiss, maybe you did punch her, you know? The man, he said to him, prophet, I did with her everything the man, he do with the women, everything, except sexual intercourse. This is a religion of who? Hmm? And they speak about our women, they wear burqa, and you know. A Muslim married woman, she can go around. She can allow the butcher to touch her. There's no penalty. Actually, you know what, in front of everybody, I challenge the Muslim to show me what the penalty for that in Islam, in the Quran, or even in the Hadith. None. Nada. What a great religion, my friend. You must be very proud. Just a reminder, we go live on air every Friday and Sunday, 10.30 a.m. New York time. This is a fixed date, you know? This is a fixed date, which means uh, in those days, exactly this time, we will be there. And during the week, I might come early, I might come late. Just you have to watch. You can subscribe to Patreon so you can get informed about when I'm going to go live. Chapter 53, verse number 32. Who is a Muslim is willing to call us and tell us how in the world? Muhammad, he approved a behavior. 
of a married man touching a married woman, playing with her private part, doing everything the man he do, and this is, is okay. It's not a big deal. Any Mohammedan? No? And then they will say to you, do you know what the Bible says? Song of Songs. Then we'll find that Muhammad is in the Song of Songs suddenly. Then you Abdul. Endless stories, all of them they are, they share one thing, they are disgusting, showing us how trashy the religion of Muhammad. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Those who speak Arabic, they do not need my translation, especially the Muslims. Here the story says, that Muqatil, the son of Suleiman, he said that this verse came down in a guy, his name is Nabhan or Tamar. Nabhan is the name Tamar, it means he sells palm date fruits. And he used to have a store to sell palm date. A woman, she came to him to buy. He said to her, go inside the store. There's more better than this. When she entered there, he wanted to have sex with her. Until now it's fine. It says she refused. But look what happened. She refused to have sex, but she did not refuse the rest. And then she left. Nabhan, he went to the Messenger of Allah. And he said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I did with this woman everything the man he do. Everything. Except sexual intercourse everything I did the messenger of Allah said maybe her husband is doing jihad or attack somewhere and then this verse came down saying to him that adultery kiss touch laying with somebody which means like you know you sleep in the top of her or on top of you but this is not really adultery this is lemon the adultery really only if you have intercourse let us use google translation to show you how filthy this religion is and i will give you the link and again this is the official government website of the kingdom of jordan <laughs> Let's see where the stories start here in English. Here we go. So this story is about Nabhan. This revealed about a guy, his name is Nabhan al Tamar. He had a shop which he sold date. A woman came to him to buy dates from him. And he said to her, there is something better inside the shop, which means get in. When she entered the shop, she refused to do intercourse, not to not to play. Later, how we understand that? Later, he will explain. Nabhan regret that doing that, so he came to the mission of Allah, and he said to him, "Oh, mission of Allah." I did not do, like there's nothing a man does not do, I did it with this woman, except sexual intercourse. So he did with this woman everything. He touched her, he hugged her, he kissed her, he played with her private part. But he did not do intercourse. The prophet, he said, maybe her husband is doing jihad. And this verse was revealed after that, saying that those are small things. Anything is less than intercourse. 
such like kissing, winkling, looking, or a daja. A daja usually it can be sex uh, intercourse, but obviously here it means he did lay down with her. They play, but he did not put it in. So he, she was naked, he was naked, touching each other. This is not a problem because on in Islam only. Fornication is fornication when you do intercourse. Only. And let me give you the link so you can use Google Translation yourself. And if you are a Muslim, you can check it out. Maybe you are lying. Maybe it doesn't say that. Here we go. The link is there. This is Islam. You find the married woman, you play with her. In front of every Muslim here, who is the Muslim can get me busted and show me that this is haram in Islam. Uh, yeah, Imam Murrah is the cousin of Prophet Muhammad, in case you do not know. And the proof of that, he have a pimple over his penis, like your Prophet. Do we have any Muslim want to answer? What is the punishment in Islam for a wife? She kiss, she touch, she play with the penis of other man or he play with her vagina. She did not do intercourse. Any Muslim can show me what is the penalty of this is true, forbidden or it's not forbidden. Any Muslim? Any Muhammadan? Actually, I find it very stupid for Muhammad to mention that this is adultery. When Muhammadan, they believe that all adultery is written for you as a destiny. It's not even a choice. According to Muhammad, when a man, he sleep with a woman, he did not choose to sleep with her. It was Allah destiny. So before Allah, he created you, he wrote in your destiny, that you are going to sleep with this woman and this woman and this woman, and you have to commit of necessity. It's not a choice. Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. Do you see it? So even when you commit fornication, but as you see, Kissing a woman, touching a woman, playing with a private part, she play with your penis is okay. It's not a fornication. But even if you do fornication, it was not a choice. It was a destiny. How that can be from God? And why God will not punish you for such a sin if he is the one who de decides for you what you will do? Do you notice that everything we say, not a single Muslim accept the challenge to prove us to be liars? After we finish, we go live, you know, we go live on air, we stay five hours. After I finish, they will see the Muslim saying, Christian Prince, you're a liar. You know, being exposed. Where is the liar? Here we go. Everything I am saying, I'm showing it to you in the screen. Your website, your tafsir, your Quran, your hadith. Nothing from me. There's a Muslim woman. She called the Sheikh and she said, I'm getting older and I am afraid I'm not going to have a husband. You know, I mean, eh, she is worried. I mean, I don't know why you call a program to ask such a question. This is very silly, but eh, people. Do you know what the answer was? The Sheikh, he said to the women, it is written on every vagina the name of the one who will if it. And I can't find the video right now. 
So he told the women, don't worry. If Allah wrote that for you, you will be effed. In fact, it's written over your vagina, the names of all of those men who is going to eff you. And here we go. This is the Sheikh from Al-Azhar University. And this is official Islamic TV in Egypt. The women, she is worried that she is getting older. And who is going to marry me now? The Sheikh, he said to her, the Prophet of Allah, he said, it's written over your vagina, the names of all the men who will if you. يعني في حديث يقال أن كل فرج مكتوب عليه اسم ناكحه. طبعا. The women, this is, look at the whore. The host she is a whore too. She says, well, there's a hadith, right? It says that it's written in every vagina the name of the one who will if it. A woman, she's saying that. Can you believe it? No dignity. A woman, she is saying, and you ask the Muslim what farj mean. Like you see, the Quran says that Allah, he blow into farjaha, to marry. They say, oh, farj does not mean vagina. Hmm? Hmm? Cover. So this female now, look how, look how, no dignity. She said, well, yeah, you know, it's written in the hadith that it's written over our vagina. Who is going to if it? <laughs> even if it's unlegal, even if it's an, uh, like not lawful, if in, it's written there in your vagina. So now this woman, after she heard this program, she will go take off her pant and she will try taking pictures. And she tried to zoom in. And maybe she need to find like kind of light, like black light, something like, like, you know, those light can discover a special ink, whatever, to find out the names of all the men who will F her. They are written there. They are all written there. And this is a video making fun of the, you know, this is a comedy here. So, yeah, she, she said to her, sure, yeah, everything is written, yeah, yeah, you know. And here you ask yourself, what if a woman, she is a whore, she's a prostitute, she sleep every day with like 20, 30 men. She will have a yellow pages over her vagina. How all the names will be written there? And why Allah writing the names of those who will F the women there? Why not in her ass? Why in her shoulder? Are we going to check the name before we do it? Like, okay, take off your panty and let me flip the pages. Where is my name? Where is my name? Ahmed, 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 Ahmed. MashaAllah, you have a lot of Ahmed there. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, Muhammad, Ali, Ahmed, Ahmed, Ahmed. Oh, eh, the name is there. Ah, okay, let us do it. This is how he make the women feel comfortable now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, the Prophet said it's written the names of all the men who will if you, even if they are illegal. If in this is religion. Now, if you are a person who's going to download these videos, you can cut those videos pieces because we spoke about many things. I don't advise you to download the whole video for hours, for hour, five hours, and repost it. And please, when you download my videos, don't keep the same title. Cut them pieces, shorten them, make a topic, make your own title. Because if all of you download the same video with the same title, when people search all of them, they will appear in one page. And then nobody of you got a view. Any Abdul? <clears throat> By the way, don't tell this hadith to your mother and your father, because now your father is going to go to check. I'm not sure if the date is written there too. Do you think there's a date? Because now your father, he will force your, your mother to go to the bedroom, open her legs, and he start checking all the names to see what she did, what she had done, and she was with who? Before and after in the future. Hmm? Take off your panty. Let us see if only one name written there, huh? How many names there? What is that? And why Allah he wrote the names there? And what kind of God he do such a thing?
Is that a tattoo? A vagina tattoo have all the names? And then the Abdul from Indonesia, he says to me, why do you keep talking about penis? And th this is your religion. This is your religion. Any Muhammadan? Look what William is saying. Who is William? I don't know. I don't see. You are just because Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Well, I don't know. I mean, you Muslim, you say the opposite. Re you Muslim, research really shows that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubts. And that is. Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. In America, this is the last thing. 23% are becoming apostates. Youth 23% in America, brother. Are you there, Abdul? I am in America. 23% of the Muslims in America, according to Zakir Naik, Mimi Hijab, now I challenge you to make a video and say Mimi Hijab is lying. Did you see it? They become up with fate. Your son was going to what the heck? That was so fast, Mr. Turkey. Your child is about to become child is about to become apostate. Child is about to become apostate. Child is about to become apostate. What the heck is that? Child is about to become apostate. Child is about to become apostate. Child is about to become. I told you to change your battery. Use your cell. It's better battery. This is what happened when you use a battery made in Egypt. And uh, Mimi Hijab, he made a video before I go live. It says how to stop Africa. Westernizing Nigeria lecturer. Ah, this is the title. But look what he's wearing. You want to stop the African from being westernized and you are wearing a suit with a tie? I mean, who is the donkey here? What's wrong with those people? Do you have a brain? How to stop African westernizing Nigeria lecturer and you are wearing a suit? With a tie? Isn't it this is a westernizing? Do you see the stupidity? I mean, this guy, he wears jeans, have holes like fashion, supposedly. And how to stop African from being westernized? Mm, you are the one who can teach them. I can tell. The one who wear pink t-shirt and the one who shave his chest a day before he go to the Chinese embassy. I mean, ask, ask this guy why he shave his chest. Why? By the way, do you know that Muhammad he used to shave all his body? It says he used to do a nawra. What is a nawra? Sugar. Muhammad used to use sugar to take hair from his body. Let me find you the hadith. <clears throat> hmm.
So when Mimi Hijab, he decided to look more feminine by shaving the hair from his body. I don't know how many of you are Middle Eastern, but for us Middle Eastern, this is a, this is a very bad behavior for a man to shave his hair. I know that some of you in your culture didn't have a problem with that. But for Middle Eastern men, this is a big problem. And Muhammad, he used to do it. So not only he used it for his private part, he do it to the remind of all his body. And you know, the funny is that Muhammad, he told the Muslims that if a woman, she take hair from her face, she will go to hell. Muhammad himself, he take hair from all his body. If a woman, she take hair from her face, she will go to hell. She is a bad woman. Allah, he curse her. Let us see. If a woman, she add actually even little hair attachment to her hair, she is going to go to hell. Muhammad, he color his hair. Read with me and love. Allah cursed women who artificial length, which means their hair, and women who uh, like you know the one who the one who made the wig and the one who gave the wig, the one who use it, and the one who give it. Like you know, if you give your hair to somebody else, you are cursed too. And then he continue. And the women who do that too. And where is the the hadith? Uh, Sharpening the end of the teeth, tattooing, blocking hairs. Uh, men sleeping together without an undergarment. Women uh, sleeping together without undergarment. I mean, look at this hadith. Let's see this one. <clears throat> There's a hate I need to find. Hold on. All right. Let's see this one. This one is even better. <clears throat> so Muhammad himself, he had no problem to take care from his body. And the excuse Muhammad, he cursed those who do that. They say, because you are changing how Allah, he made you. No, no. So when you do, do circumcision, isn't it changing the way Allah made you? Allah, he made you with that piece. It's stupidity. I mean, amazing. So look what uh, Muhammad, he, uh, he said. Allah has cursed those women who practice tattooing and those women who have themselves tattooed and those women who get their hair removed from their eyebrows and their faces, except from the beard and the mustache, this is false, it's not the hadith. So a woman, she do that, Allah, he will curse her. Different hadith. Allah has cursed the women, the prophet, he said, who, uh, who do that too and who have themselves tattooed, and those who block their hair from their faces, and those who make the spaces between their teeth for beautification, changing what God has created. See the reason? You are changing what God has created. So why Muhammad, he colored his face, sorry, his hair, 
why he is taking hair from his body. If taking hair for the woman from her face is the reason for her to be cursed. What do you think? Who is a Muslim woman here? Do not block hair from her face. Not a single one. All of you, you take hair from your face. But this is against Islam, you will go to hell. And why this man, Muhammad, this madman, he like women to have a beard? Because now if the women she have hair in her face, I mean, what that, why, what's the problem? Why Muhammad, he can shave, but the women she cannot? Any Muslim can tell us? Why men in Islam, they can shave their beard, they can't take hair from their face. And Muhammad, he did that, even to all his body, not only his face. Why a woman, if she take hair from her face, she go to hell? Any Muslim? And if the excuse is, they are changing them how Allah, he created them, then Muslims should not do circumcision. Because you are, this is way more than taking a hair, you are cutting a piece of meat. All what I talk about is penis and vagina. Ah, yeah, I'm reading your prophet. But I can say, your book is all of it is about penis and vagina, and the best scenario shit. Isn't it your God who says that you have to do ablution if you come from the shit and you touch women? So your prophet, he made touching women the same as shit. If you don't believe me, call me. What's my fault if your book is all of it is about penis, vagina, shit? In the best scenario, P. Have you ever heard of a prophet, his followers drink his piss? Can you explain to me? You see, the Christians, they worship Jesus. They worship him as God, literally. And Muhammad is not God. That's what they say to us. But the Muslims is the one who drink the piss of their prophet. Have you ever heard of any religion? The followers of a man, they drink his piss. I challenge you, and not only that, Muhammad, he told the women who drank his piss, fire will not touch your stomach no more. He claimed that his penis, piss is a holy piss. They drank his piss, they drank his blood. They fight over his booger. They fight even over the poopoo of the camel of Aisha. There's a video in YouTube for a Muslim movie. Made by Muslims. Where the Muslims are fighting over the poop of Aisha camel. The poop of who? The camel of Aisha, not Aisha. This is the movie. And this is a movie made by Muslims. This is not my movie. They take a blessing from the camel Aisha poop. Not the camel itself, the poop of Aisha camel. Let's move the movie here. This is this is Aisha camel. You see it? And the people are round and around it, waiting for the camel to poop. Literally. And then the camel he poop. People they fight over the poop. Look what happened here. Here, let us go down. Here the poop of the camel is coming down. And the Muslim hands, you see they were hands? They are looking at the ass of the camel and the other guy is praying to Allah. And the poop start coming. Is 
if you have a hair from this camel in your cloth, you are going to go to heaven. And now the camel is going to do poop. What will happen? The Muslim, they will fight over the poop. Oh, here we go. He dropped the poop. He dropped the poop. He dropped the poop. Allahu Akbar. The guy, this guy, now he got some. He was lucky. He's lucky. He got some of the poop of the camel of Aisha. What he would do with it? Watch. Oh. Those are supposedly the bad Arab, the, the guy in, the, the, in black. This is a kuffar. Those are like, uh, like the Christians, you know, they are bad ones. He's making fun of him. What are you he's saying to him? What are you doing with the poop of the camel? Huh? What are you doing? This is the bad kafir, the one with the black. That's why he's wearing black. The good Muslim, they wear yellow. You know, remember the black will make your penis not work? <laughs> He said to him, what's wrong with you? Don't you know how this is amazing? Smell it, smell it. <laughs> the guy, he is being hypocrite. He says, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it smells good. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, wow. It is more tasty than musk, man. Anyway, go, let, me, let me give you the link. So you don't say I'm making things up. Here we go. This is the video. This is Islam. This is Islam. And then the Abdul will say to me, this is what you are talking about. But this is your religion. Fighting over the poopoo of the camel of Aisha. Why? What the problem? I don't know really the original name of the movie, but this is a movie made by Muslims. No? I mean, I wish I was existed at that time. I will save as much poop as I can and put them in the stock market. I'm sure many of you can exchange the poop of the camel of Aisha with all your stocks. Maybe I can buy some, like, two uh, oil, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, field in exchange of two kilograms of the poop of the camel of Aisha. Poop? Of what? Of the camel of Aisha. If I say those things to you, you will not believe me. You will say this guy is lying. It's in the front of your eyes. You no, know, I don't think this is called the message. I don't, the message is a different one. That one is made by uh, al Qazafi. That one he hired a famous artists in order to spread Islam, you know, to fool. And you know, those artists, they don't care. Like Anthony Quinn, everything for sale. Cowards. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I think we have enough for today. Remember, again, we will be back Friday. I don't think I will be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Friday in the morning, 10 a.m., 10.30. Friday and Sunday. Take a note about that. And uh, I hope we have a good time for today. We learn something. Download my videos. Cut it pieces. Make it topics because it's long video. And I hope that will help more people to see the truth and the truth will set them free. And for now, I have to go out and see if the camel of Aisha is passing by so I can collect some poops. Because we Muslim brothers and sisters, we don't worship Prophet Muhammad. He's servant of Allah. But we drink his piss. And we drink his blood. And we fight over his poop. Even the water which they wash his underwear with it, we fight over it. But yet we don't worship him, okay? We believe Muhammad is just a servant. Not like the Christian, they worship a man. All right? Christians, they worship a man. We Muslim, we don't worship a man. But if you insult our man, we will kill you. Ah, not because we worship you. Worship him. No. <laughs> what a stupid cult. Thank you all. 
And remember this, you know, like for me, we, we have the Easter is coming, right? Now the majority, they celebrate the Easter soon, next week. Uh, for me, I believe that the most accurate Easter date is not the one according to the Western calendar, is the one according to the Eastern calendar. However, Eastern calendar, Western calendar, it doesn't matter. What we celebrate, we celebrate the occasion, not the date, because date would never be repeated, right? Uh, so, Easter is amazing. And by the Easter, and what happened in the Easter, Christ, who made many promises, who made many claims, he confirmed all his claims. This is why in this week we will challenge Muslims about the crucifixion of Jesus. And as you see, nobody there to prove us wrong. Even now we have more and more Muslim cleric agreeing with us. Why don't you meet me in my country? I talk to you there. Hey, Butang, your country is run by a stupid coward people. There's a guy, he is a Christian, he have a debate with the Muslim and he is from your country because he's an ex-Muslim and he said something against Islam, you put him in jail for 10 years. So you Muslims in Indonesia are a bunch of cowards. You are a bunch of cowards. You could not refute the guy, you could not answer him, but you try to destroy his life and put him in jail for 10 years. But don't worry, even if you stay in jail for 10 years, even for 220, the Lord will not leave him alone, and we will do what he could not do. If he stay in YouTube for five minutes, I'm staying in YouTube for six hours. My books is all over Indonesia. My videos is tsunami in Indonesia. Actually, number one people who view my videos is in Indonesia. And why? Because the Indonesian Muslims and Christians, they notice that none of you dare to debate me. Because you know that you have nothing to say. You know that you are bankrupt. If you look at uh, videos, my videos in Indonesian language, you will be astonished about how he used the number of those who watch. Link for what? What link? I don't know, link for what? And actually, every day we, we go live, we have Muslims leave Islam. You know, the guy who called me today, and he claimed that Jesus wasn't exist. We ask him where he got this from. Imagine he challenged me to prove that. He wanted me to prove that. I asked him, okay, show me. He said, in book, people of Luke, he says, okay, show me. They are really, really suffering badly. Bankrupt religion. Well, this is in the Greek book. Well, your God himself, he chose the Greek book to be the real gospel. Your stupid God, he did not even mention Matthew or Luke or Mark. He mentioned only the book of John. And he copied the words of John. Almost word by word. I hope this Friday we will have more Muslims accept our challenge, join us live on air. And if you know any Muslim, he claimed that he have knowledge, tell him, well, you know, come over, let us see how strong you are. In the Middle East we say, you know how good a diver when there is a sea. When there is no water, we do not know. Everybody is so good in diving. 
Only when there's water, we know. Here, we discover how deep your water is, how knowledgeable you are, how truthful you are, and how strong or weak you are. Challenge me, and I accept all Muslims to call me. I don't have conditions. I don't request, like, you know, Muslims, they make conditions. We have to debate face to face. I challenge you because simply they don't want it to happen. What face to face? It's an excuse. It is a good Friday, CP. Well, all of Friday are good as long as they are Friday for the Lord. The Bible says that all days are Sabbath, for all days are the days of the Lord. And right now, actually, when we say, like today is April, Wednesday 13, 707, the year of the Lord, the day of the Lord. So all days belong to him. Our calendar function by his name. Your computer, your phone. I know this is very insulting for many who hate Jesus, but just look around you. Every timing, every clock, every computer, every phone, every paycheck, every calendar, work by the name of Jesus. You hate it, you like it, live with it. It is the year of the Lord. Thank you all for being here. Until, until we see you again this coming Friday, 10.30, Friday and Sunday, 10.30 a.m. New York time. Until then, may the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is fraud. Is a scam and Islam without lies dies. See ya. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes in it. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 